In this tutorial, a grid of nine related photos are added to a single Photoshop file and then the colour is tweaked to give unity to the overall composition. This is an example that has already been created in Photoshop and you can see that it consists of multiple layers to begin with. Then there are lines that have been added and finally effects that have been added so that these affect the overall appearance of the, the entire selection of images. Okay, so now we'll create a new one. So we go File New and what you have to do is make sure that your resolution is 150 and that your height and width are 30 centimetres. Now once you've got into here, you need to make sure that you have your rulers visible at the top and the side. So if they're not visible, you go View Rulers and make sure that they have that has a tick beside it. The next thing to do is to take your mouse click it on the ruler and then drag downwards and as you drag downwards you will see that a grid line has been created and you stop it when you get to the 20 centimeter mark and then you get to the 10 centimeter mark and then you do it in the opposite direction at 10 centimeters and then at 20 centimeters. If your ruler is not in centimeters you may go into preferences so you go edit preferences and then find guides grids oops units and rulers and just change this top rulers um, menu to centimeters it's already in centimeters so that's okay another way of getting your guides in place is just to click on view new guide and this menu appears we want them at 10 centimeter intervals and we can decide whether they're vertical or horizontal so I'll put in a horizontal one and then view new guide and I'll put in a vertical one and then you do the same for the other two what we now want to do is import our file so we go file open and the images that I would like to put into this are very large this one 13 this one 9 and so on they're too big to import into that file so I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call grid size and I'm basically going to copy those files, Control C, and put them into this folder. Now, to make them distinguish from the other ones, I'm just going to change their title. To do this, you click twice on the file so that it becomes modifiable and then add it. You click outside, do it again, click it twice put the V in and then click outside. Back in Photoshop I'm now going to import them. So file open, make sure it's the grid size ones and just open them all. And we're going to use an action to resize them and make them smaller squares. Okay so the first thing you do is you take your marquee tool and you roughly draw a square where you would like your final image to be and then you go into actions and you create a new action and we will call it resize and start recording as soon as you click that record button you'll see that red um, light is on and so every step that you now will perform will be recorded as an action. So what I do now is I go image crop and crop it down to that size. I go image size and make sure that my resolution is 150 to match the resolution of the grid that I'm going to be putting it into and I want to make it 
10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Now, I didn't draw the grid exactly square, so you make sure that it doesn't go anything less than 10 centimeters. If it's larger than that, we can crop it off once it's on the grid. Okay. It's become, it looks smaller. Uh, and it is smaller because it's 10 by 10 centimeters, but now I stop the recording. Okay, so now I take this image by the tab and pull it off the top line. Open up my grid and using the drag tool or the move tool, or I can press the letter V, I drag it onto the grid. And you can see that it fits into the area between my guides and that 0.4 is just slightly too large on one side. You can also see that it is on a new layer above the original layer in the layers panel. So to crop it I create a marquee outline. I press invert, so select invert or shift control I and then just simply press the delete button and I have now trimmed it. I can at this stage now with my move tool just move it to whichever section of the grid I would like to have it in. You will notice that you've got this line around the outside, the selection line, just make sure you remove that so go deselect to get rid of it and now you can place it wherever you would like it to be. I'm going to repeat the process now with a different photo so I take the marquee tool and I draw a, a rough square. You will notice that as you drag down your marquee you can see a little dialog box that shows you the width and height of the square so you can use that as a guide to help you get it as close to square as possible. And now I start my action. Make sure that you've got the, the very top layer of that action highlighted so it starts at the beginning and press the forward key and instantly it has create, done all of those steps so the image size is now 150 and it's a 10 by 10.89, OK. So now I just pull the tab off the top. It resizes to this point here. I take my move tool, click on it and drag it into the grid. And again, you can see that it's slightly too long. Close the original file. You can save the changes. and Again, I take my marquee, drag it across, shift control i and backspace and don't forget to deselect. Now V, just move it again to a different location. These will all be changed as the final composition is created. As you can see, the final grid has now been created and all of the images have been um, arranged on individual layers. So my next step is to create the grid lines. So I start with this line tool and I draw a line down um, far too thick. I click the move I can certainly drag it into a narrower size and then move it to where I would like it to be. Now I just duplicate that layer and move it to the next space and I can duplicate the layer again I think I can rotate it, control T and rotate it and move it to where I want it to be and then duplicate the layer again, enter, duplicate layer, okay, 
and move it up with the, the move tool. There are two final things that I like to do with it. The first one is to use one of these adjustment layers. So if you click on it, um, your adjustment layer menu appears. And if you drag your slider, say, on the top line, you can adjust the hue not just on one image but on all of the images that are directly below it. And that will give it a kind of unity as um, you vary individual colours in each image. You can also drag the saturation slider along and it will do the same. And you can use any combination of these two sliders. Alternatively, I can switch that off, and another favourite of mine, to switch that off so it's back to where it was, is to go down here to these um, masks and find the one that's called Colour Lookup. Now the Colour Lookup just has presets of different um, colour combinations that apply to all of the images below. So crisp winter or foggy night, and in the bottom one, you can go again any combination of colours. I'll leave it at that one for the moment. The one that I finally have chosen is Late Sunset. And now, what you can do is flatten your entire image. Save it as a PSD for sure, so that you can go back to it and modify it as many times as you like. But for publication, to hand in for marking, you just flatten your image. And that is a reasonable size. File, Save As, and then save it as a JPEG, and call it your name. That will be forwarded to the teacher for marking.